Hi, I'm Emma. I'm 18 years old and I would never have invited you to visit me. I would be ashamed if you saw who I lived with. But one day, I decided that this had to stop. Here's what happened. That day, my new boyfriend Brady brought me home and asked if he could come in. I lied and told him that I had a lot of homework, so maybe some other time. But he said that he only wanted a glass of water because it was unbearably hot outside. I had to take him to the kitchen and give him a drink. I couldn't wait for him to finish drinking so I could quickly get him out the door before he saw. At that moment, there was a loud noise coming from the living room. It was as if something heavy had fallen to the floor, like a bag of plaster. Then, while breathing heavily, someone began slowly dragging this bag on the floor towards the kitchen. The sound was approaching. Brady looked at me nervously, then towards the approaching noise. Finally, the source of this strange sound appeared in the doorway. Meet my brother, Chuck. That's why I didn't want you to come in. He ate my last boyfriend. What the... Is this person... It was a stupid joke, of course. I really liked Brady, and I didn't want to push him away. And Chuck's appearance always scared everyone. He was just incredibly fat, and for the last few months, he couldn't even walk because he was so heavy. He either crawled or lied around. He had crawled to the kitchen on all fours, and... Embarrassed by Brady, froze in the doorway. He was only eight years old, but he weighed nearly 300 pounds. Brady left with his mouth wide open in amazement and didn't even say goodbye. My brother, of course, is not to blame for anything. Since childhood, he has had a metabolic disorder. Until about two years old, Chuck seemed like an ordinary child, just a little bit bigger than other babies. But then, mom and dad began arguing often, and it became simply unbearable at home, and they separated. Maybe my parents' divorce had nothing to do with it, but it just so happened that after that, our problems began. Mom didn't have time to monitor our diet. She was either working all the time or was deep in thought. I too wasn't up to the task of taking care of my brother. I was still a child myself. This is when Chuck began eating a lot of fatty and unhealthy food and started gaining weight rapidly. A year later, when he was three, our mother couldn't even pick him up. At four years old, he became heavier than me, even though I'm nine years older than him. Although Chuck weighed even more than some adults, he was, first and foremost, still a child. Huge, heavy, awkward and mischievous, it was one hell of a mixture. It was actually really dangerous at home. I'm still amazed that our cat managed to survive. I was always afraid that Chuck would crush him in his arms or just sit on him by accident. He was like an elephant in a china shop. He always broke, crushed, or ate everything. When I turned 14 and my birthday cake was waiting for me in the kitchen, Chuck inhaled it in a few minutes. We found him covered in frosting, just when I was coming to blow out the candles. All he did was irritate me, and maybe that's why I'm so ashamed now that my mother and I didn't take good care of him. Yes, we hid sweets from him and tried to control his appetite, but it didn't help. When he said that he was hungry, he needed to eat huge portions to feel full. We asked for help only when he began having trouble walking. After that failed date with Brady, I started taking his weight loss seriously and carefully followed all of the recommendations from doctors. I only cooked healthy food for him, and when he started losing weight and was able to walk again, I walked and exercised with him every day. He is now 9 years old and weighs 210 pounds. Of course, there is still a lot of work ahead, but I think Chuck and I can handle this. That's all. Thanks for listening to my story. Hi, I'm Wendy and I'm 18. One day, my dad decided that only a new mother would bring harmony to our incomplete family. 
even better to have twelve at once. I'll tell you all about it. My mother got very sick when I was seven years old. A year later, she was gone. Dad missed her very much and gave all his unspent love to me alone. My dad's enormous monetary wealth made it a lot easier to care for his little daughter. So I had not one Barbie doll, but two hundred. It was the same for absolutely everything. An uncountable number of toys, dresses, and shoes. Over the years, only my preferences for beautiful and expensive things have changed, but not their quantity. Maybe I'm a little spoiled, but I'm really used to not denying myself anything, and I don't even want to share my beloved dad with anyone else. For all the years of my life without a mother, my father never really managed to seriously date someone. I, myself, quickly realized that no one could replace our real mother, and we didn't need a poor substitute for her. Therefore, all my father's acquaintances ended the same way. I made an unhappy grimace, started crying in my sleep, fainting, stuttering, and resorted to other tricks in order to quickly discourage another date. Everything was going great with us. Me, dad, and his boundless love for me, until one silly thought occurred to me. During my senior year of high school, I got accepted to Yale after an interview. I knew that I would soon leave my father and he would be all alone. While under the influence of completely uncharacteristic feelings for me, I told dad that it would be nice to have a woman around the house. She could take care of him while I wasn't around and she'd bring warmth and comfort to our home. Feeling quite pleased with myself for growing up and not just thinking about me, I flew away to Paris for the holidays with friends. But I ended up returning a week earlier than I had originally told father. Upon my return, I found a new mother at home. Or rather, 12 of them. Each one had a different role in our family. Lizzie served as the doorman. I thought that she had opened the door for me without really having time to get dressed, but it turned out that it was her work uniform. Annie cooked and set the table. Heidi, Kristen, and Lou were responsible for the entertainment and took turns twirling on a stripper pole. Sharon played the piano. Aaron was a bartender and mixed cocktails. Irene read the news aloud to Dad from the newspapers. Bree knit a sweater for him, and Madeline gave him foot massages. Rona seemed free, but as it turned out, she was waiting for a cello to play music with Sharon. What Ida did here was not clear. Until night came. She went with Dad to his room and they closed the door behind them. By the way, she was not the most beautiful. She looked older than the rest and definitely liked me the least. When I think back on all of this, I can't even believe that I spent the night in the house with a dozen strange women. I couldn't talk normally with my father that day. First, I tried to get it all straightened out in the living room while his feet were getting massaged and a freshly baked muffin was brought in for him to sample. Dad only raised his finger and pointed to Sharon, who was struggling to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata on the piano. It was clear that he would not speak until she finished playing, and he invited me to sit down and listen together. It was the hardest five minutes of waiting of my life, which also ruined my love of classical music. When the torture ended, without letting me say a word, my dad apologized to me. He admitted that I had surprised him with my unexpected return, but these girls were his guests, which meant that I had to be polite to them. I didn't know what to say, but decided to employ my tried and true system. I visibly showed my indignation and resentment, and sobbing loudly, ran away to my room, slamming the door as hard as I could. I waited 10 minutes, 15, 20, an hour, two, but dad never came to see me as he had always done. I couldn't understand how everything could have changed in just one week. I barely managed to fall asleep in our brothel, but in the morning, I found that all the rooms were empty and not one of the unsolicited mothers was left. I was even glad until I found dad in his office with Ida at his side. He politely asked her to give us some privacy. He again apologized and said that I should not have witnessed all of that. He said that he loved me very much and I would always be number one for him, but he had been longing for a woman in his life to hold in his arms. And although he had not known Ida long, he felt that she was ideal for him. I either had to accept her or deal with it, just as he had put up with many of my whims. There was nothing more to discuss. Ever since that conversation, I have felt that my whole world has collapsed. 
do I really have to accept this unpleasant woman with a dubious reputation into our family? Maybe I should start calling her mom? What would you do 